and good good morning <laughs> i need to look outside good morning and welcome back to another video here in the off quit garage here it is sitting there since yesterday since i finished it well i actually did finish it i could not wait for the six millimeter cable ring terminals to arrive next monday i had to finalize the battery i want to test it I want to hook it up to the charge controller and see if we can harvest anything from this beautiful super bright sunshine today. So I used the thinner cable terminals now and crimped with a 25 millimeter die and it, it worked out all right. I can show you, I made two connections. See, there's the one which connects the two 24 volt strings together. This is my end or my mid connection. And the crimping is super tight with a 25 millimeter die. No problems at all. So I said, well, if I do this one here with the dodgy cable terminals, I'll do the other one as well there. And well, even the main positive now is crimped with one of these cable terminals these ring terminals i couldn't help myself otherwise i would have to wait until monday until they come and i might work on monday so i cannot really do anything and we've got the whole weekend to do something with the battery we also have to look at the inverter in the next video so this is all coming this weekend i will monitor all of this of course once we get the inverter set up and running and we've got load on it i need to measure temperatures and voltage drops this should be fine this should be fine also here this is one of my see this does not work anymore because i needed to file this down a little bit here the cables are so thick there at the bottom um this one is not really clicking in anymore so um, uh, yeah well later 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 uh, another modification i did you can see this cable here this is exactly our voltage sense here for the shunt so i'm not going directly to the battery terminal to the positive one i'm going on the output side of the switch so the switch is now off here and um, the bms or uh, the smart shunt is off as well bms is still running of course because balance leads are in but this was a tip of one of you guys saying well you connect the smart shunt to the output of the switch so if you turn off the switch the shunt is dead as well yeah makes kind of sense i'll as always one of these decisions in life you know and we've got the 35 millimeter cable here connected to our fuse now and we can connect our positive terminal here to the solar charge controller and our negative terminal here to the solar charge controller and then we can start charging the battery and this is exactly what i would like to do this beautiful morning ah now it's the other way around man who came up with this brilliant idea to put wheels on this battery that's insane it is so good there we go this should do it i still got the um charge controller here on the workbench so let's wire this up okay so this is all being done now uh i wasn't brave enough to connect the charge controller directly to our fuse here uh there inside the box so i have still my dc no that's an ac breakup but it works with dc as well i've still got this one in between about 30 what is it uh, 25 now 50 50 amps breaker in between we've got our positive terminal here and our negative terminal here and i will connect them now to the um, battery and then for the very first time we have to turn it on right that'll be insane Okay, let's start with a positive here. Oh. Ah. Uh, <laughs> I cannot... No, there's no way. I cannot get the positive through this gland here. This is just enough for the cable, but not for the terminal. Um, maybe I can take them off again. So, when I take off this cover here, 
This is basically the closest position we have between the positive and the negative terminals here. Well, this is a very short distance to short this one out, right? But the fuse is only powered if the switch is on. So at the moment the switch is off and we don't have any live wires here at all. So it terminates the whole fuse as well. So there's no potential threat or something. And that's why I like this situation here as well, because the switch the main switch is really the main switch. It turns off the fuses, it turns off all the live positive wires here, bus bars, cables, everything. But yeah, probably I'll develop some kind of shroud here, cover to um, make it a little bit more safer. Just a peace of mind, right? Okay. Doesn't need to be super tight. This is only for our charge controller test here. The negative terminal. This up here. Washer. Spring washer. And then bang. Back in. Just for the test. See, this is shit here. I hate it already. Alright. Negative. Positive. Switch is still off. Let's close the lid, huh? just in case. Okay, so our charge controller is still turned off. There's no power on the solar incoming. And the two leads turn on my breaker here. And now the big moment. That is it, guys, that is it. First time ever. Three, two. You never count down to zero, right? Okay, nothing happened. That means it is either not working at all or it is working just fine. Let's see if we have any reaction here. Oh yes, we have power on the solar charge controller. Could see a blue light. So this one is starting up. Okay. Yep, they're both here. Solar charge controller and the smart shunt. Connecting to the solar charge controller. You can see the lights flashing during the connection. And we've got 53.35 volts. Nothing coming from the solar yet. And we will change this right now. Okay, here's the big moment. <laughs> oh, good. It's 100 and 110 volts or something now. Okay, negative connected. Oh, God. Close the circuit. Again, nothing happens. No spark. Yes, we've got voltage. One watts. We are charging with one watts. That is. That is insane. Look at this. We are charging. First time we're charging the battery. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm so excited, really. <laughs> that is insane. Getting two amps from the solar panels. Two hundred thirty watts. So we are, we are currently charging with bulk. This is the blue LED here. So we've got bulk absorption and float. Bulk is basically the constant current. Well, the controller pumps as much amps into the battery as possible, and once the set voltage is reached, it changes to absorption, and this is the constant voltage phase. And then the current slowly drops off until a threshold and then it goes into float mode it's working it is we are charging the battery with 133 watts 2.4 amps going into the battery i can't believe it okay let's have a look at the smart shunt 2.68 150 watts going in positive if you discharge you will have a negative symbol in front of the numbers Okay, let's have a look in the BMS, 9.7, oh yeah, the sun is coming out now, 10 amps into the battery, 550 watts, 660 is the max of the panels, there are three 220 watt panels, so 500 and something, that's alright, 10 amps. Let's have a look what the 
voltages are doing here. It's 47, they're all 45, 44, this one is lower, 44, 47, 50. Number one is the highest at the moment. That's cool. That is so cool. Guys, we are charging. It's working. The freaking thing is working. See, so we're coming in with 6 amp, but we are charging with 10 amps. This is the conversion the MPPT does from a higher voltage to a lower voltage, but then it increases the current. That's the main advantage of an MPPT charge controller in comparison to just a double uh, uh, PWM controller. 500 watts into the battery. That is so cool! Yeah. It now goes into absorption voltage. We obviously have reached the threshold. Um, these are the numbers I have set at the moment. 53.6 for the absorption. This is the maximum I charge the battery to. Yeah, 53.6 divided by 16. That's 3.35 uh, volts per cell. That is the maximum I charge. And then float is 53 just underneath. So this will now taper off the current here until it goes... I don't know exactly when it turns off. There is something... Well, I don't want to bother you with all these settings in here. But I've seen... So and then if the cell goes above 3.36 volt, I start the balancing in the BMS. So 3.36, this is 5.4, this is the highest, 5.6, number one. So if this one reaches 3.36 volt, it will, the BMS is pushing it down already then. That is so cool. All right, guys, I think I leave it like this. I don't want to bother you with all the settings here with these apps because we've got the charge controller, we've got the smart shunt, and we also have the BMS. We could potentially look, but I need to switch back and forward, and this makes the video super boring. Well, this was just my quick test. I think we've got full sunshine now out here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, ho, ho. Welcome to sunny, hot Australia. Yeah. I'm using only one string at the moment. I haven't connected the other string inside the um, enclosure, but we are using this one here, and I would say we've got almost optimal angle, but... I think the panels are dusty, yeah, but still we are getting 550 watts out of 660. You know, I'm super happy with that result. And they are probably 10 year old solar panels as well. Yeah, we are charging with 214 only because we are already in the absorption. If I, just for a quick test, if I set this one here higher to say 55 volts just for the test Yeah, we can see it's ramping up now 500 10 amps Amazing amazing That is so cool Yeah, and now you can see we have reached 3.36 volts and these cells are already balancing now so they're getting discharged through the BMS to keep them all below 3.36 now. The BMS obviously is not strong enough now to push them down to this voltage so see all the cells here they are all getting balanced now and this why that's why it is important to have the solar charge controller correctly programmed so this should actually not happen very often and if we Pull this down to 53.6 again. And this should go into absorption and should lower the current straight away now because the battery is full. Yeah, it goes almost to zero. Look at this, 38 watts only. Yeah, it goes to zero, I think. And then under a certain threshold, it um, goes into flow charge and turns off the charge completely until the battery drops to uh, 53 volts so if you go back in the BMS the balancing should have stopped now 
yeah there's no balancing anymore see because the charge controller now limits the charge to the battery and the bms is only a safety net as i said before this one here controls how full the battery gets how much charge you get in the battery and if this is not working correctly the bms kicks in and then discharges the cells and make sure everything stays safe on a cell level it controls all the different cells while the charge controller only sees the overall voltage of the whole pack that's why it's important to have a bms all right guys as always thank you so much for watching I, I thought I'd share this exciting moment with you as well. Even there's not much to learn today, but you know, the excitement is just there. We're getting so close now. And I will shoot the inverter video right now. You will see this tomorrow or the day after tomorrow then. So thank you so much for all your support here on the channel, all your comments, and we will see us again in the next video then. Okay, stay charged. Bye-bye. I don't know exactly what this frog is trying to do but um, he's definitely too big to go behind my inverter here hey buddy are you alright? you cannot get in there you're too big and these fins they are quite hot here what is he doing? These stupid frogs.